Hello, my name is Hannah Yankelovich, and I'm a second year MBA student at the Tuck School of Business at Dartmouth College. I'm also an MBA fellow with the Tuck Center for Digital Strategies. I'm pleased to welcome John Ginder, Manager of System Analytics and Environmental Sciences in Research and Advanced Engineering in Ford Motor Company. John, welcome to Tuck. It's great to have you here. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Great. So this year our theme is big data, and I'd love to start with just hearing about what is big data mm -hmm. to you. Certainly. As we all like to say, big data involves the three, v, the three Vs, so uh, velocity, or the rate at which the data is produced, uh, variety, and volume. And uh, for us, uh, it means a lot of different things, actually, because in the automotive industry, we have so many different data streams that are being generated uh, you know, either internal to the business or externally. We like to understand what they all are and use them to better serve our customers and, and better run our business. Oh, that's really interesting to hear. Thank you. So we know that Ford has been using big data in marketing and in uh, product development. Can you give us some insight into sort of how you view big data mm. in these areas? Sure, sure. Uh, so we see at least three or four major thrust areas. Uh, there's an internal thrust areas around the data that we generate in the business back end. Uh, there are plant floor data potentially that uh, a lot of which we would call data exhaust. You know, it's produced as we make our vehicles, but then it kind of falls on the floor. We don't use it. Uh, so we would ask ourselves, can we do a better job with that? Uh, and then there's external data sources as well. One which is you know, near and dear to our, to our hearts is the data that we generate on the vehicle. Uh, there's an estimate that about 25 gigabytes of data are produced every hour on our, some of our more advanced uh, vehicles. So that's a lot of data. Uh, <laughs> of course, we don't use that all uh, after the, the operations are uh, completed on the vehicle, but we like to ask ourselves what other opportunities might we have there. And then sort of another uh, source would be the data that exists out in the, uh, on the web uh, that gives us more insight about what our customers are interested in, uh, what features they might like, and what they don't like uh, as well. So, uh, so all those are interesting to us. And then we also are interested, of course, in the mashups or the combinations or correlations between those various data sources as well. So. That's great. Uh, you know, I'd love to hear a little bit more about big data in the vehicle. Sure, absolutely. Um, we know that this is exciting and yeah. very fast yeah. developing area. Sure. Yeah. Can you give us some examples of what kind of data um, you guys are looking at as I'm driving down the street in my vehicle? Sure, sure. The vehicle is uh, essentially a closed loop uh, control system mm -hmm. with 40 or 50 different computer modules wow. on board. So there are a lot of computations going on, uh, everything from how the engine is operating, what the transmission is doing, uh, what the environmental conditions are, you know, what barometric pressure, humidity, temperature, uh, to what the consumer is demanding or the, the driver is, he or she is driving down the road. So all of those represent opportunities, I think, for us, uh, again, to better uh, operate the vehicle, to optimize its performance, and, and ultimately to improve the experience for, for the driver and the passengers as well. So the, really the sky is the limit, I think, in that. Uh, the real question is how much do we leave on board the vehicle and what can we upload to mm -hmm. the cloud or to remote servers to do some more sophisticated computation? And uh, that's sort of what we're wrestling with right now, I think. So. Yeah, it's a big challenge, I could see. Very, it is. very interesting. It is. Yeah. So you mentioned this a little bit, but on the other side of the coin, how is big data sort of helping you on the operations yeah. floor? So certainly, uh, you, you know, we, uh, we have a lot of data that, uh, uh, tells us, uh, you know, how our vehicles are doing in the marketplace, uh, you know, what's selling, what isn't selling. Uh, and we use that data to make better uh, recommendations of vehicle orders to our dealers, who are, again, an essential part of our, uh, of our business. Uh, we try to use big data to help inform about which features might be more popular with our consumers. Again, uh, do they like the pink or do they <laughs> like the purple, you know, for a vehicle exterior color, for example. Some of it's not, tr you know, I would say uh, technically big data, but it all points in the direction of having more and more sources of data available to us that we'd like to use again to help improve our products and, and the way we do our business as well. So That's great. Yeah. So what do you think is the biggest prospect as you look into the future of big data and and how you think it could change the automotive sure, industry? Sure. Well, I think, uh, I think you've hit upon it. I mean, I think uh, data from the vehicle mm -hmm. uh, is, a, is a huge opportunity. I mean, obviously there are some risks as well. We don't want to invade anybody's privacy. Yeah. Uh, we are very, very, very sensitive about that, clearly. Uh, but uh, we think that uh, using anonymized data or using opt-in, that we can probably do a much better job of uh, designing experiences for our customers in optimizing the operation of their vehicle to get better 
fuel economy or uh, to uh, better time their route or you know, lots of opportunities around that, I think. So that's, I think, probably the holy grail. We've maybe just scratched the surface. Uh, some of the first in instances where we've used these kinds of approaches are in our electrified vehicles. Our, mm -hmm. We have a, a Ford Focus Electric. Uh, look for it in your stores. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, we, uh, we use something called MyFord Mobile to mm -hmm. upload data about the state of a charge of the battery uh, mm -hmm. on those vehicles where the nearest charging station is, whether the battery is being charged at this moment. And so this, uh, this helps us understand how well the batteries are performing, but it, more importantly, it helps the consumer have some confidence that he or she is going to be able to make it home or to find a charging station before running out of uh, electricity. So uh, that's a good example of, uh, of where a big data kind of operation can give uh, the consumer a better experience and help us as well. Wow, the sky really is the limit. It is, it is, absolutely, yes. <laughs> Very exciting. <laughs> so are there any other areas of big data that we haven't touched on that you mm -hmm. think might apply? Uh, you know, I think, uh, I as you were saying, you know, we've just started to scratch the surface. You know, I think uh, what I'm really excited about and what I uh, talk to my team about all the time is looking for those mashups or those correlations mm -hmm. between these distinct data sources. I think we really could do a lot more there. Uh, you know, for example, uh, wedding plant floor data with warranty data, for example. Can we see some patterns early? Can we detect problems earlier? And can we do, say, prognostics or diagnostics uh, to help uh, help our customers avoid problems again? Okay. Well, I would love that. So, I mean, with yeah. that little red light means okay. that would be really helpful. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so, do you see any limitations to big data mm. in the automotive industry? Uh, well, you know, we, we're a traditional industry, you know, we're, we're over 100 years old now, so I think uh, there are a lot of existing processes that we have to kind of shoehorn into. You know, we have uh, data centers that uh, are running software that's 30 or 40 years old in some cases, so there are some legacy issues that can be a problem for us. But again, with some of the big data tools like Hadoop, you know, we think that we can begin to surmount those. But, but the legacy systems are a challenge uh, the data ownership and security is a challenge this is the age-old uh, the age-old tension between the folks who want to use the data the, you know the analytical people and the IT people whose job it is to protect the data last question for you is there any other questions that you think we should be asking about big data and how it might be impacting your industry. Right, right. We do think that there are some research challenges here. So uh, how better can we use these data? How better can we visualize them? I, I'm a strong believer in uh, th that a picture is worth a thousand or a million words. Sure. And uh, I think as analytical people, we tend to want the data, but we don't we don't consider as carefully how we present the data in, after we analyze it. So I think there's a really op a big opportunity for, for academia to help us develop tools, especially in this big data space where the volumes are so immense uh, for tools that can help us do that. So uh, that's one of, of several challenges that I can think of. So John, on behalf of the Center of Digital Strategies, it's been great speaking with you today. We really appreciate you sharing your thoughts and insights with us today. This has been Hanny Ankalovich at the Center of Digital Strategies at the Tech School of Business.